Hi guys, it's Ben here. Liverpool have just beaten Arsenal 4-0. For the first time this season, I'm just absolutely buzzing. I really can't think of any negatives, to be honest with you. I was just absolutely dispatched. One of the best teams in the league, and I say that, they weren't one of the best teams in the league today. I think that's probably the worst team, the worst performance at Anfield I've seen from, from a visit inside for many, many a year. Uh, it was pretty disgraceful. It's, it's, the worst Arsenal, it's the worst Arsenal team I've ever seen in my lifetime. Um, and when you consider the talent on the pitch, Ozil, Sanchez, you know, Xhaka and Ramsey in midfield, you think that should be enough. Koscielny was back in there in defence, Petr Cech in goal. It's staggering how they can turn up and put in such a woeful, toothless display. I think, you know, you kind of have to feel sorry for those fans that did travel up to Anfield there. But that's at least of my worries in the grand scheme of things. Liverpool have just gone second in the Premier League table. Um, you know, <laughs> It seems a really negative atmosphere around the place over the last, well, if you take away the last week, the atmosphere around the place and, you know, the sort of talk on social media around signings and stuff has been really depressing, but we've just really, the last two results, 4-2 against Hoffenheim, 4-0 against Arsenal today, I think we can just be completely positive now. So let's go into player ratings, Loris Karius. Now, if there is one negative today, well, not a negative, just a... Uh, a little nag, it's the fact that he still looks so uncomfortable on the ball. Three times today he took too long when the ball was given to him. Okay, the second one, Matip shouldn't have given it to him, but he dwelled on it and he will get punished for that if he keeps doing that. So, interested to see you know, him in, even in the team. I'm not sure what's happened with Minile. Was he just dropped? Uh, is there some sort of fallout? Is he going to leave? Uh, it's all really unexpected. It's come out of nowhere. Um, Karras can have a 5 out of 10. Some, I, I got kind of slagged off on Twitter for having a go at him, um, calling him a disgrace and stuff. I just can't stand it when keepers take too long, bite off more than they can chew. Um, look, I apologise if I was too uh, harsh on him there, but it's just it's just how I feel. Um, anyway, uh, Joe Gomez at the back, he did okay, he did enough. Um, obviously gets the cross for the first goal and defensively it's pretty solid, I think. Maybe one or two bad decisions going forward, but do you know what, honestly, again, just as, as he was against Palace last week, he was pretty good, shrewd on the ball, uh, 7 out of 10. John Matip, I thought there was no way anyone was getting past him today. He didn't have much to do, uh, neither did his centre-back partner Lovren, but I think he was the standout in the defence. I'm going to leave him 8 out of 10. Lovren can have a 7 just for sort of helping him out, keeping the clean sheet. One or two sort of teasers for mad moments, but it never came into fruition, so 7 out of 10 for him. And the same can be said for Moreno, got forward quite well, some nice crosses, um, one or two mad moments at the back. You're going to get that with him. I think Robertson will eventually be our left-back, but Moreno did okay today, 7 out of 10. Going into midfield, Jordan Henderson. Out of the midfield three, he was probably the least standout performer, um, but still a 7 out of 10 probably. Um, recycled possession well, I think first half in particular had loads of space. I mean, the Arsenal midfield today was nothing short of abysmal. Um, Henderson had loads of time on the ball to sort of find the wide men. Uh, so, and, and there was that one time when he pressed uh, and carved out a chance. He nicked the ball off of one of the midfielders, I can't remember who it was. But he, he was just non-stop frantic throughout, so 7 out of 10. The other two, um, I'll start with Gini Wijnaldum, who hasn't been magnificent in the opening few weeks of the season. This performance today was magnificent. It was as close to a perfect midfield performance as I've ever seen from him. I know obviously it was very easy against Xhaka and Ramsey in there and Coquelin's second half, but you can't take anything away from him. Magnificent, just taking on players for fun, putting them on their arse. I think he put two or three Arsenal players on their arse. Um, just, there was no way he was ever going to lose the ball. He just kept twisting and turning, using his body. Uh, his passing was magnificent, he was so intelligent. Um, I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10, and I'm, give, and I'm going to give the same rating to Emre Chan, who followed up his monstrous display against Hoffenheim with another one here. Just, again, so strong, so composed. The passing, the range of passing is just magnificent. Driving forward, making the right decisions on every single ball, all weighted to perfection. He's just, that duo of Wijnaldum and Chan ahead of Henderson, absolutely flawless today. 9 out of 10 for Emre Chan. On to the attackers, now Sky gave Mohamed Salah man of the match, um, didn't quite agree with that one, look, he was great, he's, he's such a threat, he's so quick, he gets the goal, uh, but he does miss a couple of chances, obviously that one sitter that could have made it 1-0, but look, it's an 8 out of 10 display for him again, he's just going to be so consistent I feel, he's, whether, he, whether he has a blinder or not, whether he scores or not, he's going to be such a threat, and he is going to get a lot of goals, I think all three forwards are going to in this formation, Mohamed Salah 8 out of 10, enjoying him in a Liverpool shirt, I really am. On the other side, Sadio Mane. He's been the best player, has he been the best player in the Premier League so far? He's right up there with the best footballers in the Premier League, and I'm not exaggerating. He's absolutely frightening. Rob Holding had a nightmare today. Who can blame him? I mean, the man is goal when he cuts inside. Holding maybe should do better. It's so predictable, but it's just world class. It, 
I say it's world class. He's not necessarily world class, but some of his play at times really is on the verge of world class. I don't think he's, I, don't, I think he's unplayable uh, most of the time. And Arsenal found out today. Monreal on the other side again against Salah had similar issues, but holding in particular I felt was really made a uh, made to look pretty average today. Um, so nine out of ten for Sadio Mane. Firmino, glorious, glorious performance. I'm going to give him an eight, just underneath Mane this time. Um, wasn't as involved as it was against Hoffenheim, especially second half. But again on the score sheet. Involved in pretty much everything. Uh, in, the, in, in the opening exchanges, the first half an hour, he was at the forefront, dropping deep um, and just making the space. Obviously, he gets the assist for Mane's goal. What a display from Liverpool. Uh, going on to the subs, uh, Grujic, Milner, and, you know, I can't even remember who else. Oh, Daniel Sturridge, of course. How can I forget Daniel Sturridge? The substitute comes on and scores. Um, 7 out of 10 for the goal. Not really involved other than that. Um, Milner and Grujic can each have sixes. But look, what a, what a way to send us into the final... A uh, few days before the transfer window shuts, what a way to send us into the international break. Uh, I want to see what happens with Mignolet, I'm a bit concerned to be honest, as I, I mean I have no interest in seeing Karras as our keeper for the rest of the season. Hopefully whatever is going on with Mignolet, Mignolet is resolved. Um, Robertson is still to come back in, Coutinho is still to come back in, I mean where does he even play? Um, do you drop Henderson and bring Chan back into the six? I honestly don't know. Lallana is still to come back at some point. The squad is, is great apart from the defence. If we can just sign Van Dijk now and keep hold of Coutinho, what can happen? Anything can happen. I mean, I've been very negative going into this sort of end of August because of the lack of activity. I'm at the point now where Van Dijk in, anything's possible. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Leave a comment with your man in the match. Follow me on socials, as Ben might say, on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook. I'll see you next time. Up the Reds.